point, I will read the scripture, which comes from the sixth chapter of John, starting at the 60th verse. The disciples, as Jesus is speaking to them, are wondering at this point, because you can contextualize this, you have to look at the, the scriptures that come before it. The Lord is asking them at this point in time, not literally, but figuratively, telling them that they have to eat of his body, but they don't understand it. They think that he's speaking literally. So as we start in the 60th verse, it reads as thus. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew it himself that his disciples murmured at him, he said to them, Doth this offend you? What? And if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before, it is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me. No man can come unto me, except it were given unto him of the Father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? And they answered, Peter. He answered and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art. flower fades and the grass withers, but the word of God stands forever. Let us go to the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we come this morning. Hearts set, but we come realizing and knowing that you are a God that sits high and looks low. We come thanking you just for being God all by yourself. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that covers each and every Christian that's called according to your purpose. We thank you for your son Jesus Christ who sits right now as your right hand as I pray this prayer. us from our sins and dedicates us to your righteousness. We thank you for allowing us to come before you boldly and declaring our innocence through our faith in Jesus Christ. So right now, we bring our petitions and we lay them before the altar and we leave them there knowing that in your time you will deal with each and every one according to your will so right now I pray for every church that's open in your name and I pray for every angel that you have assigned to oversee those churches Continue to bless them. Bless our mission. Continue to strengthen him. Bless his family. Bless his children. Bless his grandchildren. Continue to give him, to dip him deep in your word. So that he can stand on the wall continually as he's done in the past. And promulgating 
but thus saith the Lord. So right now, we say thank you. We praise your name. We say hallelujah to the land that was slain. Thank you. And we pray that you would continue to watch over us. Thank you. We pray this prayer in the name of God the Father.
time. It's, it's offering time, Mount Hermon. Come on, let's put our hands together. It's offering time at Mount Hermon. You know, these are some tough times here. Not only here, but globally, I'm sure, during this pandemic. Uh, churches, a lot of times, aren't open. Um, and and it's, it's a tough time because your financial blessing to operate a church. So at this time, we're, we're asking that you continue to give as you've done in the past. Continue to give at this time because no pastor wants to be full of stress during these times. And it's a stressful time for many people out there. So uh, we're asking that you continue to give. But the question a lot of times is this. See, God has it all. What he really wants is you. Your giving just kind of falls in line with how much does he have of you? Does he have it all? See, uh, he, he wants 100% of you and your heart. So continue to give. That will continue to use you in a mighty way. At Mount Hermit here, you can give by Giblify. That's at Mount Hermit Baptist Church. In here at 11:30 to 12:30. All right, so that's Giblify that you can bring that you can give your offering, and also you can bring it here at Mount Hermon between the hour of 11:30 and 12:30. Amen. 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 We thank you for those that gave, those that have the desire to give. Uh, continue, we'll continue to lift you on up in prayer and continue to be obedient to what God has called you to do. We're going to have a song, and after the next election, you're going to hear from our very own Bishop Dr. Pastor Donald J. Washington. God bless you all.
heart and on his mind. He did not have to bless us today, but he did. Yeah. So you want to thank Mr. Brown for presiding this morning and for our trio the Tronineers. <laughs> we want to thank you, Trina, Trina, and Gene. And uh, thank you so much again, Tyler. I certainly appreciate them for just having all the music all summer long, for all the year, actually. And so do we thank uh, Gene for that eulogistic prayer. And we certainly thank him for eulogizing. Now the word that means to speak well of him, give a good report. And how he read this scripture with such diction and elocution. So I won't repeat it, but uh, the text today is out of John chapter 6, verse 60 through 69, which he's read so beautifully. But I just want to hew in on just one of those verses. Verse 66. But it says, From that time, many of the disciples went back and walked with him no more. God bless you. You may be seated. When I was growing up here in Columbus, Ohio, back in the day, we were able to come home for lunch. I went to Garfield Elementary School, started out in the kindergarten, the first grade. And from kindergarten, they changed the district because we were brought baby over. In the first grade, going to the second grade, we changed the district and I had to go to Ohio Elementary School. For just several months until they built Bay Park. After Bay Park, going to the, from the third to the sixth grade, they changed the district again. And we had to go to Felton Elementary School. But during those days, since we all were in for lunch. And many times when I would come home for lunch, my mother, she was really involved in these melodramas. <laughs> Every time I would come home, she would be watching. I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget The Secret Storm, As the World Turned, The Edge of Night, and Search for Tomorrow. <laughs> Those were the so, well, the, the melodramas that they played during the 50s. But you know, that was the birth during those times of the game shows in the early 50s. Game shows, some that are still being remembered today, have been played on other stations that have survived over 50 to 60 years. We watched these game shows, DJ, that came up back in the day. We, and they still, some of them still going on today, and I wrote them down, Jeopardy. It survived over 60 years, Gene. Uh, the Newly Wed Game. <laughs> Truth of Consequences. Yeah. Let's Make a Deal. Yeah. The Price is Right yeah. to Tell the Truth. Yeah. That was my favorite. Yeah. I don't remember those. <laughs> We were trying to say that. <laughs> to tell the truth, it was a good show. I loved that show. Because what would happen, it was very, it was a very easy uh, program because what it would do, they would have an, a person that had a particular thing that they did in their lives, a woman or a man who did great things, and they would come on this show called To Tell the Truth, and they would bring imposters there. That's right. That's right. That would be in that those three that would be on the platform. Two of those was imposters. Right. The host would bring in uh, the, the celebrities, and what they would have to do, they would ask this person different questions about this particular thing that they did, and they would ask questions over and over again, trying to find out who was the real person that did such and such. So after. A few minutes after the program is coming to a close, the host will call, and what they would do, they have to write their ballots down and answer to, as to who they chose. And when the host says, will a real person stand up? And they would 
Some people would try to get up halfway and then halfway up. Then finally, the person that did such and such would stand up. But the prize would not go to the person that did such and such. It would go to the imposter who they chose, the celebrities chose in error. And when I looked at that show, it helped me to understand that that was a good program. But at the end of that show, that host would ask, who will be the, who's the right person? And finally, the person would stand up, and it would not be the person, and the prize would go to the imposter if they didn't choose the person that did the work. Well, they were fooled to judge, and the judge would finally come to the point where they understood who that imposter was. But I know that, uh, unfortunately, that person that was the real person did not get a thing, just the imposter. And the palace show really is done back in this text in John 6. There were some imposters. I wonder how many people that said that they would follow Jesus. Were they imposters or were they the real person? In that episode, this that discloses all the entry, all the the uncertainty, the imposters that were in that crowd. And it bothered me when I looked at that. I, really, I wonder how many of those folk told the truth that they wanted to follow the Lord. Jesus is able to discern really commit, who's the really committed person and who are just hanging out just to be hanging out in the church. This is an episode of the real disciples if you are in the body of Christ, I wonder how many of us would really stand up and say, I'm the one. Or are those just imposters that come to church Sunday after Sunday, but they're really not sold out to Jesus Christ? And I wonder if we would identify them. Are they the ones that wave their hand and say, yes, I'm sold out with the Lord, Wherever he wants me to go, I'm going to go. Whatever he wants me to do, I'm going to do my very best. For in this passage of scripture, the impartial could not fool Jesus Christ. Yes, we have all the buzzwords. I'm the head, I'm not the tail. I'm too blessed to be stressed. I'm too annoyed to be disappointed. Really? Will the real disciple stand up? The good news is that the prize money doesn't go to the imposter, but the gift of eternal life is what Jesus is trying to others tell us, that even though you try to get all this stuff, I'm, I want to give you something better than that prize. I want to offer you eternal life. Can I teach my for just a moment this morning? Let, let me give you the context of the controversy. The controversy is always the historical of the feeding of the 5,000. That's in your text. This miracle is recorded in all four Gospels. If you know the setting, Jesus has had a long day preaching and teaching, and he sees a crowd of 5,000 men, not including women and children, and they get together because they are hungry and Jesus tells the disciples to go out and find some food for them. So they go out and they find a little boy with uh, five loaves of bread and two fishes and they bring those things back, look, back to Jesus and Jesus breaks bread and the multitude is fed 5,000 not including women and children. He feeds them. Jesus, because of this miracle, becomes an interest, uh, interesting success. Feeding 5,000 yeah. people? Yeah. Can you believe it? 5,000 men, not to include women and children, and as he does that, this movement becomes big. It becomes a mega ministry. 5,000 folk not including women and children, 
that he fed, it was a miracle. Now, it becomes a mega church and they follow him. Now, 5,000 members joined in one instance and there, these folk are now called the disciples of Jesus Christ. Praise his holy name. Amen. They're following Jesus because they've been at, for at the feeding frenzy. 5,000 folk fed, they can follow them. Amen. Can you imagine that many people following Jesus? So what happens is that he gets up in the morning, Jesus, he's frustrated, he's tired, and he goes from Galilee to Capernaum. That's right. That's right. And, and, and I want you to see how good these disciples were. These disciples joined Jesus. They walked up, woke up the next morning, and they couldn't find Jesus. And so they find out he's gone. And so rather than try to get frustrated, so the good disciples leave Galilee and follow him to Capernaum. I can tell you haven't read that. So that they could follow him. That sounds great. They get up early in the morning. They couldn't find Jesus in Galilee. And so since they could not find him in Galilee, they pack up and go to Capernaum. Sounds like a good thing for disciples to do that. If they get up, that sounds great. They look for him and they, when they find him, so that they could be called disciples of Jesus Christ, so that they could keep following him. That's what every good disciple ought to do. We ought to follow Jesus because the person is seen and the purpose is stated. And what he wants to do is to disciple them so that they would be fishers of men and go out and make disciples themselves. You ought to search far and wide and, and find him. When we follow him, we follow him not only just to follow him, we ought to follow him in, with his commandments and his ways of life. They find Jesus in Capernaum, and when Jesus sees the members gathered together again, he now begins to give them a sermon. The scholars call it the sermon, if you look at it, in the bread of life discourse when he begins to hammer out the things that they must do. Jesus begins to share with them that he was the bread of life and that he begins to tell them about eternal life. And all they have to do is to believe him, follow him, trust him, and he's going to give them eternal life because he come to give them the spirit because the flesh promises them nothing. We all want trinkets and stuff. But he said, I've got something better for you. I want to give you eternal life. Yeah. Yeah. And in the good preparation for the Eucharistic moment, he says in verse 58, talks about anyone who eats of my body, which is bread, and drink of my blood shall not die, but they shall inherit eternal life. Isn't that good news? Yeah. They're excited, Reuben. They got up early. They went out of Galilee, go to Capernaum, find Jesus so that they can find him, so they can see him and follow him, and he preaches this Eucharistic sermon. All oh, seems to be real right now. Hallelujah to the Lamb. There, there, the crowd, the charisma, all of that is going on. But Jesus discerns, Reuben, that the crowd that gathered together, they really don't understand what he's talking about. Eating of my body, drinking of my blood. And Jesus asked the question. He said, does this offend you? Is that in your mind? Does this offend you? Well, literally, it doesn't mean offend. Scandalizo is another word that literally means that uh, to lose confidence in the one that you should trust. Scandalizo. It means to lose confidence in the one 
you should be trusting. So after this sermon called the bread of life, Jesus asked those who gathered around him, have you lost confidence in my authority? Does this offend you? And one of the saddest statements in all of the Bible, and I kept reading it over and over in all the scriptures, it came to us in verse 66. And those who have been gathering, who were following Jesus from Galilee to Capernaum, those who were the recipients of the 5,000 being fed, those who Galilee to Capernaum to hear Jesus, they now look at him, and the Bible says, and they went back and walked no more with him. Tragedy, isn't it? It's disgusting. Early in the text, Gene, they were hungry. He fed 5,000 men, except the women and children. And now they want no more with him. The recipients of this faith blessing. And they journeyed all the way to Capernaum to hear Jesus. And they looked at him. And the Bible says they went back, walked no more with I'm driving that point home. The crowd now says, We're not going to another father. I'm not going with you. I drew a line. I didn't sign up for this. I'm not going another father. This disciples. Draws the line and they go another but he talked about eating up your flesh and drinking up your blood. Really? They are disciples. But they decided they are not going to follow Jesus any longer. They are disciples. They come to church, but they're not they not reading the Bible that I read. They are disciples. They, they own a Bible that the, that the papers are stuck together. <laughs> but they don't live the lives of the word of God that's in that Bible. They shout when shouting time comes, but they are not committed to Jesus Christ the way we should be. My brothers and sisters, I came back to tell you this morning, I wonder what caused someone not to follow Jesus Christ who fed them a day earlier. And now we don't want to have anything to do with you. Allow me to give you several ideas as to why some someone would walk away from the Lord. Can I suggest some of things? First of all, the reason why they didn't want to walk anymore with the Lord, Johnny, they could not embrace the meaning of the miracle. They could not embrace the miracle or the message or the meaning in the miracle. Yeah. Look, well, listen, you got to understand when you read the synoptic gospel, they're different. John would distinguish him and all the other Matthew, Mark, Luke. He's a little different because when he's always dealing with signs. But are he, when he does a miracle, it's always a sign attached to it. Because John recognizes and realizes that every good work that Jesus does is not some random coincidental miracle. But when he performs it, he gives revelation and discourse to who he really is. No one can do those works except God sent him. So he would open the eyes of them who are with him so that they would understand who he really is. So when Jesus works signs in John's gospel, you will oftentimes find that the miracle is attached to Jesus, giving himself disclosure by a statement saying, I am. Okay, well, I have to pause there. He always 
gives himself a disclosure of who he is by using the words, I am. Okay, you can miss that. John, in the same, John chapter 4, he says, you know, he encounters a woman at the well. He's not going to give me water because I am the living water. Yeah. When he encounters a blind boy in chapter, matter of fact, in the ninth chapter, he finds a young girl that's blind and he spits on the ground and makes a spill and he anoints his eyes so that when he can announce that that boy was healed, I am the light of the world. Yeah. And John 11, when he goes to the grave of Lazarus, and he has to go to the grave, and he resuscitate Lazarus from the grave, now he can say, I am the resurrection and the life, and he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. I wish I had a prayer in church. So the miracles are meant to open the eyes so that they would understand who he really is. So, in John 6, Jesus breaks bread, multiplies it, and feeds 5,000 that they can say, I am mm -hmm. the bread of life. Mm -hmm. God ain't praying with me. Come on now. Yeah. And that he that eateth of this bread shall never hunger again. Right. Now, watch, watch the controversy. Watch the controversy. Now, they, they, they always confirm him. They been fed. They want to hear him. They want to follow him until he gives this sermon. You know, I preach a lot of sermons. I see some bold eyes when I'm preaching. <laughs> I see folk that say not me. They start looking at other folk and point at other folk. As if, oh, I know they, they woke up saying. They got that Bible bigger than, you know, the one that's on the, in the living room that's on the same page for 45 years. Yeah, those that, that, that cross around her neck larger than the one that Jesus took to Calvary. I'm not talking to y'all. I know you can't hear born speaking in tongues. I know you, you you got this thing. You don't need church. You laying hands on folk. You say, I'm going to lay hands on myself. I'm just that. Mm -hmm. Preach, Reverend. I am the bread of life. Jesus multiplies and feeds 5,000 with bread. And then the next day, they declare, I am the bread of life. In the minute he says that, the crowd who got 5,000 blessings looks at Jesus and say, in verse 30, give us a sign. Mm -hmm. I'm to tell you, I'm ready. In verse 30, he says, we know you're doing some stuff, but give us a sign. Not like I'm going to read it, but it says, therefore they said to him, what sign will you perform then that we may see it and believe we do? What? They just got fed 5,000 of them. Sound like some of our folks. We gave out government cheese and what you gonna do for me next week? Chris Reverend. And he declares I'm the bread of life and one minute later they said, give us a sign. You missed it. Y'all miss it. He breaks bread. He feeds 5,000. They receive it. He says, I am the bread of life. And they say, prove it. That's what they said in verse 30. Prove it. Show us a sign. My God, I wish I was. I would have said, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you want to be there? You just said you was hungry and, and God has fixed things for you. Right. And folk just yeah. crumble all the time. Had a lady in our church. I said, hey, girl, it's going to be pretty today. She said, yeah, but it's going to rain tomorrow. No. Some folk are just chronic complainer. What's going to happen is those are not We are so saved. So the Lord draws an indictment to those who would be recipients of the miracle, but miss the meaning of the discourse of God because they wanted a sign. Well, if God has raised you up this morning and you don't have some hallelujahs on you, you miss it. 
If you slumbered and slept all night long and then didn't have to worry about a long cock waking you up, mm -hmm. you missed that miracle. Yeah. If you don't start blessing the Lord for all he's done for you in the past and now, right now and in the future, you miss, you miss, yeah. you miss the miracle. You, you miss it when you did not have to worry about your heart having a heart attack last night right. and did not get up and say, thank you God for another day. Right. That's a miracle. Right. And if you have not rejoiced, you missed it. Mm. You don't have to come into the atmosphere like this to give God praise. Right. Just right. come around your house and see what God has already done for you. Yeah. And you got a, a, a roof over your head and clothes on your back and yeah. food on your table right. and a reasonable amount of milk and strength yeah. and you never pause and say thank you Lord for another day's journey. You missed it. I'm looking at Teresa over here. She had a heart problem in a hospital for years. For a whole year and a half. Sick. Had a problem with her heart. There was a mass behind her heart. And they took a biopsy of that heart. And what she did, she turned her face to the wall and started praying. And when the report came back, it was benign. Yeah. And that's why she, she didn't miss it. She said, thank you Lord for another day's journey. My heart is still tick tock. <laughs> thank you Lord. Don't need to defibrillate tick tock. That's a tick tock message. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Now they miss it. But Peter didn't. Mm. He didn't listen. He didn't say, no. We know who you are. You are the son of the living God. The reason why I know it is because I have irrefutable evidence and undeniable experience. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you think about what God has done for you, you ought to have irrefutable evidence and unbelievable experience. Look, right. Jesus was walking on the water in a storm yeah. and Peter could testify. He said, oh, yeah, I got experience. Yeah. I got evidence of what he's done. He said, Lord, then he come and Peter stepped out on the water. Yeah, right. Even though it was boisterous and moving and all of that, and as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, yeah, that's right. he was walking on the water, but as soon as he took his eyes off, he began to say, y'all know, because when I was sitting, I prayed the quickest prayer, yeah. and all he said was, Lord, save me. Yeah. Oh, preacher. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. He has an insurable uh, evidence uh -huh. that God yeah. is supernatural. Yeah. Yeah. And he can do anything but fail. Yes, I wish I had some happy, humble folks. Uh, right now. <laughs> but God has blessed you. You ought to humble yourself. Mm. And thank God for all of the blessings. I'm humble whatever he does for me. I thank him in advance. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to wake up in the morning. So I think I said, Lord, I'll thank you for tomorrow. Right, right. And if tomorrow don't come, I'm all right. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. Listen, they leave because they didn't embrace the meaning of the miracle. But, 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 but also, they left because... They could not endure the difficulties of being a disciple. Hmm. Y'all be quiet. They left because they could not endure the difficulties of discipleship. Let me use my simplified imagination. I believe Jesus was saying, I, I know why you, you're here. I'm just saying, I know why you're here. You're here because I worked a miracle yesterday. Mm -hmm. You saw me do these great things. Yesterday, you saw the glory of being with me. That was yesterday. Yesterday, you, you experienced the magnificence of what I can do. That was yesterday. Y'all yeah. Was also so excited about being with me yesterday that you showed up today with a great expectation that today 
would be as glorious as yesterday. Uh -huh. I don't know about you, but I, I got some yesterdays, but I got some days that I'm not feeling good. I'm not in the presence of God. I feel like God has left me because I've done some crazy stuff. Yeah. All right, now. Yeah. They find out. They, they are working hard. And then you don't get a promotion. We, that's a bad thing. And we want to understand where God is. It's okay. It's okay when you, you think that, that things are not going your way. That was yesterday. My struggle is, is when I walk in the shoes of Job, And, and I don't, and I do all that I'm supposed to do, and everything that I've lost in my life, I, I don't understand. My struggle is, Sister Worship, when I walk in Mary's and Martha's shoes, and I ask them to heal somebody, and it doesn't happen, and they pass away. My struggle is. But I walk in Peter's shoes and and proclaim the gospel and get locked up. My struggle is like with Paul. That I struggle with the storm of flesh and you can't take it out. Yeah. yeah. But when I say you fear me, but what I do when I don't understand what God is doing. Have you ever been in a place? That you do all that you can. You walked in Job's shoes, you walked in Peter's shoes, you walked in Paul's shoes and Mary Martha's shoes, and nothing seems to happen. That's a struggle. I don't care how holy you are. Where are you, God? The disciples who are following Jesus, it's hard to follow God that you don't understand. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now that you know that it's hard. Are you going to leave? All of us have struggles. Trying to be all do. And some people get tired of the church, DJ. Mm -hmm. I come to church, get my tithes, pray, and seem like all hell breaks loose throughout the course of the week. Mm -hmm. And I can't get any relief. It's hard to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. I told you it's going to be easy. a question with a question. God being rebuked. You, you know you can't ask a question with a question. <laughs> Jesus asked, are you going away? And Peter says, Lord, well let me say it this way, Lord. Where shall we go? Where are we going? Why would we leave? Oh, I wish I had some Baptist folk this morning that would say, well, where, where I'm going? Yeah. You have the gift of eternal life. I know I've gone some places I shouldn't have gone. I know I've done some crazy stuff, but I came back to the Lord. What else did I do? I've gone other places. Yeah. I've done other things. Uh -huh. yeah. Where can I go? Yeah. Lord, some of us, we tried everything else and nothing can hold us together, but you, like you, you keep us together. It may be not easy for us, but you kept us together. If you Sometimes you may have to delay in coming to us, but you still held us together. I know we have this Pentecostal joy, and we want to have joy all the time, but God, there is no other option that we have other than to walk with you and trust you yeah. and hold you and hold us and keep us charged up and keep us in your hands. There's no one else who can hold my life together than Jesus Christ. I know that there's a lot of us that have gone to other places we ought not have gone, Priest Reverend, yeah. and gone down some wrong paths. Listen, Reuben. <laughs> and found that at the end of the day, 
God was still with us. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Brian, God, when we was messed up on a blunt, God was still with us. Right. Yeah. When, when we was on crack and didn't crack out, yeah. God was with us. All right. Yeah. Yeah. When we drank so much alcohol, we didn't know if it was then or that, and you woke up in the wrong hour, God was with us. Yeah. When you couldn't pay your bill and somebody in at the right time at the right time, God was with us. Yeah. Where can we go? You take care of us irrespective of our own isness. Yeah. Jesus said, here's the problem. This is the, the mega growing church that joined. We all want more bread. He said, they left because they could not embrace the meaning of the miracle. They left because they could not accomplish it. And last is this. They could not enjoy the satisfaction of the spirit. Mm. Jesus said, here's the problem. Great big old church father him trying, and you want something that will fill your flesh. That's what you want. You want something that's going to feed your flesh. And you connect yourself to me because you want me to, to bring something that's going to tickle your flesh. That's that's it. Listen, he says, listen, I, I don't come to touch your flesh yeah, yeah. again, but what I want to offer you is better than bread. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I, I'm offering you something that is more satisfying than material stuff. Yeah. All that flesh stuff profits nothing according to scripture. Those of us, those tangible blessings profits us nothing. I got something better than that that money cannot buy. You can't buy this at Neiman Marcus. You can't get this at Macy's. You ain't even can't get this at Shopping Steam that's closed. What I'm offering you is eternal life. And I thought I'd stop by and listen. For your father ain't bread according to the scripture in the wilderness. And they died. They want things of the flesh and they still die. I have come this morning and Jesus says it this way, I, I come that you have life mm -hmm. and that more abundantly. That's why Peter said, Lord, where are we going? Gee, the third 
first says, I'd like to say, my sin is of this glory thought my sin that in part but the hope is nailed to the cross. I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
stomach yeah. and to present your faultless with exceeding joy to God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. In the master's name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.